Hi, my name is Ray Jarvis, reporting here from Iona University. With me right now, I have Mets legend, New York legend, Dwight Doc Gooden. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Appreciate you coming. We're going to get right to it. I'm a huge Mets fan. Sadly, I've never got to witness a championship. I've heard a lot about 86. I've seen the highlight packages. But I need to know from your perspective, what was it like to win in New York City in 86 as a Met? What was that like? Tell, let us know. I guess the, way, the best way to describe that, I mean, obviously, it was surreal to do it in New York. It was my mm -hmm. third year in the majors. Um, the year before, we came so close. And back then, they only had two divisions. And we won 98 games. We got sent home. Right. So coming to spring training in 86, everybody had one goal when I was winning the World Series. Um, everybody put the Eagles aside because we had a lot of guys that probably could have been playing every day for other teams. And we just put it all together. And everything came together from the front office to the players and um, to win in New York in the first to clinch the division in New York and to share that moment with the fans on the field. I mean, it was scary and fun at the same time. I didn't actually win the World Series at home on your home turf. I mean, that was just... Rarish can't really describe that, especially the way it all turned out. Um, it was just a dream come true. You know, we hear about 86 a lot, but I never hear about the years leading up to 84, 85. They talk about the team was bad. We hear about the Hernandez trade. You were there in 84. You were there in 85. What was it like building up to that championship level team? Well, for me, I wasn't. I missed 83. Mookie probably can talk to you more about <laughs> before what took place. He was there before me. But um, when I got there in 84, you know, we had a young team. Mm -hmm. Um we had, you know, like Mookie, we had Mookie, we had uh, Keith, and then like for the pitchers that we had Mike Torres, Craig Swan, some veteran guys on the staff that helped me along the way, helped me how to learn the hitters. And um, it was great, you know, getting experience and everything. And then 85, you know, we added Gary Carter to our young staff because we had myself, Sid Fernandez, Ron Darlin, um, Rick Aguilera, so we had a young staff. So to have a veteran catcher, all-star catcher come in, to me, it was the icing, even though we didn't win in 85, but you can see the team all coming together. Um, like the end of 84, we had Ray Knight also, another veteran guy. And everything just came together. You could see it just coming. And as um, as you mentioned, when Keith came on in 83, from what I hear, he didn't want to be there. And supposedly if, um, Frank Cash and General Manager told him to hang around, we got some talent coming up. And everything, you could see it just coming together because even when I was in the minors in 83, the minor league system from rookie ball to AAA was stacked, stacked with players. So it, just, it was just a matter of time. Okay, that's great. Um, what about rivals during that time? What was the team that you guys looked forward to playing, that got up for, gave you all a good push as you were leveling up to becoming a champion? All of them was tough, you know, because back then it was no fraternizing. We didn't talk to the guys before games on the field. But I would probably say the Cardinals okay. probably the biggest rivalry because we shared the same spring training complex. We had a lot of B games with the Cardinals. We should fight in spring training. <laughs> Obviously, fight, <laughs> fight during the season. I mean, 10 o'clock, you still have sleep, but mm -hmm. then you're fighting. So I'll probably say the Cardinals was our biggest rivalry. Okay, and my last question, more about modern baseball. This year, the advent of the pitching clock, the shift is gone. What do you think about the modern state of the game? I like the way it's going. I mean, um, the shift and everything is, you know, moving that back, it considers more involved instead of just going with the lunch angle and trying to hit home runs. You probably see more hitting runs, more stolen bases. Guy using the whole field, so hopefully the averages go up. Um, I think it speeds the game up as well, which is great. Um, which is great. And the pitchers just about the pitchers making an adjustment, you know, to that. Um, but hopefully they don't start making too many changes. It's been a lot of changes. I mean, it's a beautiful game. So hopefully they don't do too much more to mess the game up. I agree with Doc. This is Ray Jarvis of my university. Thank you for your time. Mets legend. Let's go, Mets. Thank you.